Okay. Um, we're here today, Monday, June 14th, 1230 for CDRC. The first application is 282 Route 59, proposed office building site plan for chairman's endorsement. Mark Goldberg here. Hi, Mark. Okay, so Dan had made some minor changes to the resolution, um, which I updated, which was basically um, adding dates of the public hearings, adding dates of the um, the Rockland County letters, um, if applicable on an easement um, for through the engineer, any required insurance um, monies due, or naming us on the insurance, excuse me, naming the bill insurance. insured. And that was it. So I have the original plans. Um, I don't know if everybody looked through it, but I, um, once I have the approval, I'll send the approval form for everybody to sign before a chairman's endorsement. My, my only question is, um, Valerie, on the resolution, we're doing the date that was the review at the meeting. And actually, this is a Dan question. Now, when they come to CB, CDRC, there was some, there's a revised date. Do you want that date in the resolution? So if the meeting was April 22nd, for example, Mark's plans, I believe, are dated May 21st now. Should I be changing that or adding that into the resolution? I noticed that this morning because- well, What was the- um... The planning board approval was April 22nd on those plans, but there were some, I guess, minor changes that were discussed at that meeting that were put on the plans. So that's my question. All right, well, if you they were discussed both? at the meeting. So go by the date that was discussed at the meeting and approved at the meeting, correct? Okay, I just wanted to be yep. sure. Okay. Does anybody have any comments? I'm sorry, I haven't had the opportunity to look at anything yet. Okay. All right, so then we'll do it behind the scenes. Yeah, I have to print out that resolution and compare it to everything else that was listed and, you know, do the final review as we always do. Okay. Same thing. Okay. All right, so Mark, I guess we'll let you know if there's anything that we need to do, you need to do on your end once that review is done. You don't have to come back to a final CD or C. It'll be done behind the scenes. Okay. And then, right. I will, you know. My understanding is that we complied with everything that they wanted. Right. Is there, a, Go ahead. Is there a stormwater management agreement required? I don't recall. Yes, and it's in the packet. And do we have it? Yeah, we have it. And we okay. have the fire lane. We're just waiting for um, it has to be reviewed. And the security? Yeah, uh, I didn't get the security because I don't know the dollar amount. I haven't been provided the dollar amount. Okay, don't get defensive. I'm not, I'm, just, I'm, I'm not being defensive. I'm just answering your question. Okay. Yeah, that's typically one of the checklist items. So we'll take a look at that. When yeah, we I mean, it's, it's typically 5,000, but I don't want to assume if it's something different and I don't know, I don't make those calls. Okay. Okay. All right, so we'll be in touch, Mark. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a wonderful Thank day. You. You too. Thank you. Okay, Jen, are you there? Hi. Good morning. Good afternoon. <laughs> JP Morgan Chase proposed upgrades to the parking lot amended site plan. Uh, same thing, chairman's endorsement. Um, Dan, there was one question about the fire lane that I had sent you. They did the stormwater agreement and submitted that, which needs to be reviewed. But the fire lane, I'm assuming, has to be done by the owner. Correct. Okay. So you're so um, you you are going to have to get that approved by the owner, Jen. Yep. Yeah, that's not a problem. We figured that was the case, and that made more sense since we're just the tenants. So that's fine with us. 
Okay. Yeah, that's the same with the stormwater maintenance agreement that goes back to the owner, not to the tenant. Oh, okay. So that's right. good to know too, because that one it had, I think it had language where it's basically, it, it said owner or person responsible for maintenance of the equipment, something like that, some language. But if you prefer that both be um, signed by the owner, that's fine. Well, then if it's not going to be the owner, then the owner has to assign you that to be that person. Yes. And there's a probably, um, you know, Dan would have to review it for the, the, the legal end of it, because when you leave, if and when you leave that building, it, it can't be left un unattended. So that's well, why we not only that, but to the owner. that form gets filed with the Rockland County clerk. So if someone were to search that document, I don't know how they would search it when you have to input the owner to be under the uh, find legal documents. Well. Right, so when you search it, you could search by not, address, not, section, lot, and block, couldn't you? But Yeah, so, but my concern you, is- You if could if you're a type. If you're a title company, like um, the Rockin County Clerk has a website, you cannot look up uh, land records based on a second block and lot number. You have to have a name. Oh. All right. So, I mean, Eve can review the Schedule A portion, assign the dollar amount, which I can get to Jen. And in the meantime, then we'll get, get the, it. We'll get it executed by the property yeah. owner. Yep, right. no problem. And then we'll have the property owner do that. Yeah, uh, I did review that one. I had that one early on. So the um, the attachment A looks good, and I would put the five thousand dollars in for that amount. All right. So I'll revise that, Jen. Send it to you, and then you can fill in the piece for the the property owner. I do want to just put on the record, Jen did send an email, which I forwarded everyone because it was asked at the planning board meeting about that basin that was appeared to be, I guess, clogged or I don't know whose responsibility it is. But Eve, I just want to make sure I don't know if you got to see that email. It's probably about a month ago after yeah. the meeting. She well, let us know. The property frontage is either the DOT or the county. So it's got to be depending on the physical location of it it would either be the DOT or the county. I believe it's the DOTs and that the email that Susan is referring to is sent to me and I forwarded it along to Jen and she forwarded it along to Susan. Yeah, so, and so my question is, do I have to go to the DOT and let them know, Eve? No. No, okay. I, did, I didn't know if I needed to do anything. No, uh, the applicant should contact them and if they need backup from the village, we could provide it from engineering. Um, yeah, they're both aware by the way. Oh, okay. Both county and DOT. That's what that okay. email is. Just kind of put them on notification that it needs to be cleaned out. And un unfortunately, um, as many times as we ask, it gets assigned to a work list and, you know, everyone's short of staff and. Okay. But Eve, but Eve um, is, are they going to look at this like they look at maintaining sidewalks? Um, and that it's the local municipality's responsibility under the highway law? No, it shouldn't be. It ha it's not in any other village. I don't think it would be here. I mean, I thought when I was in, um, when I was the village attorney in Slotesburg, there was a problem with uh, storm drains on 17. And DOT took the position, oh, not our problem. You got you're you're responsible for taking care of them. No, I never heard that, but I guess it's worth looking into. Then maybe you should look into it for Airmont. But it's been my experience that any of the drainage within the right of way is belongs to that particular entity. Um, they do a lot of times there are contracts for snow plowing and things like that because the DOT just doesn't have the resources to get to all the little villages, but for actual maintenances, maintenance of the stormwater system, that goes back to the DOT. But if you have other experience, then maybe it's worth looking into. If you know who well, to contact, that'd be great because a lot of those structures need to be cleaned out. Well, have, have, what's your experience been with uh, sidewalks on 
uh, county or state roads. In sidewalks terms of, belong to the, the municipality. They don't touch sidewalks. Right. So. Yeah, curbs and sidewalks are under the jurisdiction of the municipality, but the road itself and the drainage was the particular entity. Okay. I can, um, the, the email that they send us is a quick summary just to read it is the three catch basins located on the corner of Route 59 and College Road were cleaned by DOT. And they were um, found, Brandon, I guess is a supervisor at DOT that confirmed all this, that they all interconnect to a main line. I don't know which road, I guess I assume on Route 59 and that it, that line has been collapsed. So they sent their reports to their department heads, I guess. And and that's the email I believe Jen Porter forwarded to, uh, mm -hmm. to everybody. Yep. So there's the supervisor's phone numbers on that email, uh, his name. So if you guys need it, there it is. <laughs> Thank you, that's very helpful. Okay. All right, so I'll be in touch, Jen, with everything. Sure. Okay. Okay, great. Okay, thanks. Have a good day. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, I need Thank everybody you. for a couple things after this. I'm going to stop the recording. Okay. Um, I don't know who Arnie is, but I'm going to ask him to please get off. This is just other stuff that's not meeting wise. <laughs>